All right, so we are back today. Um, the we being myself, Asta, and today I have a guest, Michael Kospia. And if you're enjoying this chatting with series, please like, meaning thumbs up, comment, subscribe, join us every uh, Monday through Friday, 1 p.m. for our premieres of each episode. And yeah, um, hi, Michael, how are you doing? Hey, what's up, Asta, how are you? I'm good, I'm good, I'm in Australia. Yeah, I see that, I see that. Yeah, so what is that, Sydney? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was. Uh, I, I thought we were gonna meet um, in Australia to talk about one of our upcoming projects. So I, but now they put me in this quarantine, and there's only. Yeah, it's a little hard. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I mean, that's gonna be really awkward for, for Clay and I. But yeah. that's fine. That's fine. That's yeah. fine. <laughs> anyway, um, so I'm gonna take off this hat. I, I, did, <laughs> I did one of these uh, DIY haircuts and. Uh, I should have done it. I should have just done it in solidarity with you, because it's getting warm. Yeah, it's getting oh. it's getting warm. So I mean, it is. It is. Yeah. But uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, for those of you that don't know, uh, Michael Caspia is an award-winning screenwriter, and he's a producer as well. And um, he, you may uh, catch some of his work online, including the much beloved the, the Suicide Theory, which you can watch on Amazon yep. Prime and VOD. Um, wow, what a movie. Let's just start there, first of all. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Um, what, so when I first saw the movie, I was just struck by how with the title and some of the grit with the characters and everything I was expecting a really dark pessimistic tale and what I left with was like an incredibly uplifting example of the rippling effect of being just a choosing love if that makes any sense I don't know if yeah. I can, yeah, um, sense, yeah so you know, and, and I and I feel like you have uh, a great way of exploring, um, I don't want to say scourge of the earth characters, but people who most would throw away, yeah. find like redeeming qualities about them. And it made me think like, what, you know, I ask a lot of my guests, like, what is their North Star? Like, what drives you in your art? Like when you, when you start and create something, like, what are the themes that are like, this is a Michael Cospia story that needs to be written. Well, I like writing about flawed characters. Uh, I mean, we're all human. I'm a flawed character myself. So, you know, <laughs> we're all flawed in our own ways. So, and it, like watching movies, I find it, like I was a kid who kind of rooted for the bad guy a lot in movies. Yeah. They're always more interesting, you know what I mean? They, so I was like, oh, and uh, then I saw Taxi Driver, and I was like, wow, this guy's kind of a bad guy, but at the same time, like, we're following him throughout yeah. this whole movie, and he's so interesting. And uh, yeah. yeah, that kind of, that, that, I guess that would be my North Star. Like, very flawed characters that you would probably hate, Yeah. but uh, they have redeeming qualities that you can't help but, like, and they're very interesting, too. You, yeah. You're drawn to them in, a, in some way. Uh, you can relate to them in some way. I mean, the suicide theory. Obviously, he's, he's a, he kills people, but yeah. like, it's, it's a terrible, a terrible thing. But yeah. Um, yeah, he's a he's a very lonely person. He's a very uh, he's had a tragedy in his life, uh, you know, and he's been deeply affected by that. And you know, so yeah, I think it's interesting to follow the journeys of very flawed characters that you know uh, you'd probably not like. Yeah. But isn't that interesting how, because uh, I'm kind of, I have a similar North Star, I guess, to you, out of all my guests for some reason, um, it, this idea of like finding incredibly unlikable, flawed people, and then like really diving into uncovering why they're like that. Exactly. Like, what made that, what, like, it's almost like from, from my inner voice, it's going, who did this to you? Like what? What made <laughs> you black in your soul? Yeah. yeah. And so, and I think what, without giving anything away about suicide theory, it's just ideas that are themes in our life. It's interesting that you really do explore with, by the way, multiple twists. Like every time I was like, what? 
what? And, and in a way that like snuck up on you because you have such a love for your characters that you really like let the audience sit with them. Yeah. Sit with them. And then you unveil different things. But going back to boomeranging in the Australian movies. Thing, oh, there you go. <laughs> um, you, you like to find ways to show that when you push something out that's like negative, it will unexpectedly come back to you. Sure. And you may not understand it until you stop and like actually pay attention. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Well, when I wrote that script, I was going through, uh, I wrote it like 2008. I was like 25 years old. Yeah. And uh, well, I was going through a kind of a M. Night Shyamalan phase, you know. And so, you know, there's a lot of, I, I read some reviews and they're like, oh, this would have been M. Night Shyamalan's fourth best movie. I, I've seen that a couple of times. Not bad. I love Signs. I love Unbreakable is one of my favorite movies ever. And then uh, 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 Bruce Wayne, uh, Sixth Sense. Yeah. But um, when I wrote that, I, I didn't outline at all. It just kind of like, I was going through a rough time in my life and like feelings were so intense at the time that I kind of just, I had the characters in my head already and I kind of just kind of just freestyled it a little bit. And of course, after rewrites, I structured and organized it a little more, but like it just, yeah seem to it, it once I start writing it just I just follow the characters and had them take me to and some of the twists I figured out after the first draft but uh yeah it was a, that was a very personal uh I mean obviously it's a it's very far fed that you know I, I took like certain feelings and exaggerated them in yeah. you know, scenarios and situations but uh yeah it was uh and it was therapeutic to write too while I was doing it you know I did um, just finishing a script period, you know, I talk to your husband a lot. He's been writing like an animal. Um, oh. but, um, it's just finishing a script is, it makes you feel good in, in itself. Yeah. But, um, but to get those, those feelings, I like to, I like to write a lot of personal shit into, you know, my scripts. Yeah. And it's a very therapeutic. It gets it out. It's, you know, it's almost like it, yeah. hitting a punching bag almost. It gets, it gets yeah. it out there and, uh. Yeah, it makes you face certain things that you're not um, willing to face in real life. Yeah, so. I like how you say that you kind of exaggerate certain feelings because something, especially given the, the world circumstances right now, oh, yeah. I think that some of the things I really gravitated towards just reading, obviously I've read some of your work and I've seen multiple um, productions based on your screenplays, but this idea of like the strange way that people cope, you know, like how the main character in Suicide Theory, like he wears lipstick and wears, you know, he does all these weird things. But when we're in quarantine, who would have thought that like toilet paper would be the first thing on people's minds? Or who would have thought that like people would be shamelessly, you know, making like, weird shows of themselves it's just like there's all these really weird behaviors that are happening right now especially yeah, yeah, I and see you that. you you've uh done your own haircut i'm so close to where you're at right now <laughs> oh, are you yeah, but don't don't do it like I when, I when i bought the clippers i was i was so happy i found a good deal on clippers and uh i was so excited and uh, I, I i was watching this youtube video uh, how to give yourself a fade and i was like yeah, yeah. but then you know i forgot and have a mirror for the uh, it was it was just a disaster. I posted a picture of it, <laughs> and I thought like people would be a little more supportive. It, it's fine, right? whatever. I, I thought people would be like, oh, not so bad. But the, everyone was just like the cracking on me the whole time. So I was like, so I tried <laughs> fixing it, and I just made it like ten times worse. It, I just kept. It, this is over the course of like two days it took to do this. So. Well, uh, you know. I think it looks fine, and I think <laughs> I, I'm glad. Oh, thank you, thank I'm you. Glad that you came on my show. Still, I think <laughs> yeah. that I think that, that little, yeah. it's important that we all like just give ourselves a break right now. You know, like just we're all we're all just doing the little things that we need to do to keep going by, and you know, it's it's really enjoyable watching. Um, I got to I got to watch. Uh, rage at one point and I thought that was yeah. a powerful piece um and obviously I was you gave me one of my first um AD credits I got to do second AD work on, oh, uh, on short. 
Yeah. Well, that's, how I met, that's how I met your husband. And that's how I met, and then ultimately you too. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, you guys helped out a, a lot. As you know, it wasn't the smoothest of productions, but, uh, but, but honestly, none that are, I mean, none of the smooth productions that I have been on have been all that fulfilling. You know, no, like, yeah. like you learn more, you know, whether it be cutting your hair, watching crazy things or sharing crazy things. We're all like, we learn more from when we put our mistakes out into the universe and we like, we progress. You appreciate, you appreciate the, the good aspects of, you know, yeah. Uh, the movie didn't turn turn out quite as good as I wanted. It, it it's okay, oh. but I wasn't going for okay. I was, I was like, yeah, like uh I I wanted to uh do a feature version of it like right from the start and I was yeah. like this is going to be the thing that's going to but pal, now I I did post on YouTube and it's it's doing, it's doing well. Yeah, it's doing pretty well. So for a 25 minute short, it, you know, that's a, a people's attention spans are pretty you know. Yeah. But so. what I, and uh, if anybody's watching, we are developing the feature, and I am in it, so it is an exciting yeah. time to continue to create. Um, but uh, anyway, uh, I was also gonna like randomly point out something that I maybe it's like a nerd thing about me, but when I was watching Suicide Theory, I noticed that you had buttons and you mentioned curses, and I'd recently seen Drag Me to Hell. Oh yeah. And so I just was like thinking about like different trinkets and how like there's certain power in those visual elements and uh, you you do find ways to fit like totems in your scripts. Yeah, yeah. And um, I don't know, like, is that something that naturally comes or it's something that you like add after the fact or do you naturally well, have- Well, with the suicide theory, it was something- like I wrote in 2008 and went to production in 2012. Mm -hmm. I actually didn't include that until um, 2012. Like oh, wow. it was already optioned. They're like, oh, let's do another rewrite on it. Yeah. So it was like, uh, I wanted a way for the main character to find out the other character. It's, I'm not going to give any way. Hey. <laughs> but um, yeah, I was like, oh, so, you know, a button from the dress. So yeah. that's, uh, yeah, a lot. Of, See, the, the thing about the, the way I write, I don't, like, I kind of just, I don't know, like, hearing people's interpretations is funny to me, because they, they make me out to be, like, oh, did you read the, this book, and it inspired, like, the, the, all these philo philosophers and stuff, I'm like, I have no idea who the fuck that is, so, um, it's kind of just, like, insti a lot of it's instinctive, uh, yeah, um, they never left. They have the record. There's a record player in it that's very symbolic. Uh, but uh, I'm not purposely thinking that I have to include this. It's just it just come it just comes to me. Yeah, they're yeah. they're interesting. I mean it, and you know you're also one of the lucky people. <laughs> lucky, you're the only person that my husband shows scripts to for like months, and then I read. Oh yeah. So you, uh, well, you in the uh, the one script he wrote, I think I read, uh, I think I read that script more than anybody, maybe even him. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I, I worked with him on. I didn't work well. I read his script and offered some advice. Yeah. It's uh, crazy. Take it or leave it, you know. But uh, yeah, your your husband's very talented, and uh, and he's. He, you know, he has, he's determined. So I, it's very infectious and makes me want, you know, good things for uh, people when I see that. Well, he appreciates your um, input and, and screenwriting mentorship. And I think that that's something that isn't valued as much as it should is like a good script, a well-formulated yeah. story. Um, and you know, I'm so happy to get to talk to you on this show because I feel like screenwriters don't get the attention that they deserve considering yeah. the fact that, like, I mean, I, I, as an actress, read a lot of scripts and yours definitely, it's, like, clear from the page. Um, yeah. So, anyway, um, on that note, I wanted to ask you, uh, is there anything about you that people don't know that you'd like them to know? Oh, um, that I'd like them to know. Um, <laughs> there's, there's a lot of people don't know about me, but a lot of the other, um, 
what I want them to know. Um, well, it's weird. A lot of people that like I'm known for my darker, to writing darker stuff, but like I really like musicals a lot. Um, What's your favorite? My favorite, probably Sound of Music. I mean, when I was a kid, my grandmother was like, uh, used to make us watch. And they had the VHSs where it's like five, uh, five different cassettes. And uh, I think I've seen that movie so many times. Um, the, uh, but Willy Wonka, or which one's the one with Gene Wilder? The, uh, you, uh, no. I think that's Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Yeah, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. That, yeah. that was big for me. I would love to write one someday, but it's, I know it, that might be a little further down the road. But I, I love musicals. Uh, I like I like watching. I, I mean, I love horror. I love dark stuff. But like, you gotta even things out a little bit sometimes. Uh, I just got shut uh, 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 during this whole thing. I would I got Shutter. I subscribed to Shutter, and yeah. I've seen like every movie on there, and it's awesome. But like at the same time, I'm like, all right, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm like watching with the lights off all day. I'm like, all right, time to open up the blinds, let the sun shine in, and uh, you know, watch something a little light. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we've been watching a lot of Tubi. Oh yeah, me yeah, me too. I just it's what I, I was just watching. Uh, I saw the Devil on there the other day. Uh, yeah, there's a free. lot there, and it's a free streaming service. I mean, that'll probably yeah. change soon. But they and then also Lifetime Movie Network. We've been watching a lot of pulpy '90s TV movies on there. And then yeah, musicals are Sound of Music is actually a great movie to watch right now like in general yeah. like musicals they they're very um they're very trans transformative like you get this this chill in the back of your spine when you hear like a really good song and like it resonates with you so much deeper than oh something. yeah i remember i saw la la land and like oh no like a lot of people don't well a lot of people love them i love the movie but a lot of people are like like cool people, they're like, oh, I, they hated that movie. I'm like, oh, come on, man. I remember I saw it in theaters, and that, I don't want to give anything away, but that, that scene at the end, I was like, oh. like I'm, I'm not a cry, I'm not a crier, but like instead of cry, uh, I like gasp, and everyone like looked. I was like, oh. it was, yeah, it's uh, I love that movie. It was so especially because I'm in the arts, and it, I could I've hated people who were in the arts, and it, you know, it's it it was something I could uh, relate to. Yeah, I uh, my my La La Land is uh, singing in the rain. Like I can watch that oh, yeah. on repeat over and over. Anything where Gene Kelly just dances. Oh yeah, he's brilliant. Yeah. It's just like, oh my god! It, I I just adore full expression, and I think yeah. Yeah, musicals really like they make people the artists in front and behind and around it like so vulnerable and like soulful and like yeah. have you been watching um any of the the sgn episodes well, what's that the it's john krasinski had this like quarantine show for a short period of time oh, called no. some good news and he surprised somebody that was a fan of hamilton with like a zoom musical number from hamilton no no way and I was I was a wreck. I I have oh, really? <laughs> I still haven't seen the show. I've just heard song, but I was a wreck. I mean, it, it's just the power of song and the power of that kind of community. Uh, another movie that really got me was Once. Uh, this is before oh. like it, I was like Jesus Christ. This, <laughs> this is, I, I was like a, a wreck for like a week. It, I really that really got to me. Yeah. But, um, uh, yeah. On, on that note um is there um, you don't have to sing it but like is there a <laughs> is there a resonating like message that you'd like to send out to the universe to the universe yeah i don't know i don't want to get you demonetized here <laughs> <laughs> but it just kind of there's like a lot of like back i'm not a political person i just kind of but just just everyone just shut up like enjoy each other's company even if you disagree yeah like people are like oh they're he likes this guy so i'm not friends with him anymore even though i grew up with him then i'm like jesus christ <laughs> just because just they don't agree with you you're gonna so yeah it's just settle down everyone shut up and settle down shut and up. just live with each other so what if they disagree with you just you know i i completely agree i think that you know 
what's the term it's like don't don't yuck someone's yum like try i never heard that it's like don't ruin like like allow people to to enjoy their things yeah exactly Exactly if if you don't like people to live then that's like the one like where it's like well yeah yeah, that's uh, (laughs) but if you're but like i think you can get more out of people and out of life if you like truly invest in getting to know even the people that you may never agree with you know like yeah. like all your characters they have they're they could be labeled deplorable right they could be labeled sure. yeah they could be labeled horrible people but at the end of the day like there's some beautiful stuff in there and choosing choosing to love and to settle down and just that's that's great yeah just accept i mean I don't know. I have friends from both sides of whatever, you know, political yeah. what, whatnot, and we're all it, They'll say something that I think stupid. I'm just like, oh, that's dumb, but that's it. <laughs> yeah, it's, I'll still break bread with them. I still drink and drink a beer with them, and yeah, as long as they're not like overtly like racist or something that's totally conflicts with my. Yeah. Like you said, they like killing people. That's yeah. where our relationship has got to end. But uh, yeah. Yes. It's okay. To, it's okay to disagree with people, and it's okay for them to disagree with you. Perfect. That's, it. That's my message to the world. All right. On that note, thank you so much for joining me, Michael. You were wonderful as always. And oh, thank you. Stay, stay safe and healthy. You as well. You as well. Tell Clay I said hi. Just shut up, settle down, and live with each other.